Hello everyone, the topic which we are going to deal today is about Napier grass. Let's start with few introduction. Napier grass, scientifically known as Penicetum purpureum sumacer, is a tall perennial grass that produces nutritious high protein fodder. It is known by various names like elephant grass, Sudan grass, and king grass. It contains about 8.2% protein, 34% crude fiber, 10.5% is with both calcium and phosphorus in proper balance. Napier grass is also considered as a soil restoring crop as the grass leaves the soil richer in organic matter. This grass can better be used in silage making rather than hay making as the grass is too coarse. The advantage of Napier grass is that it propagates easily. The disadvantage is that it is an aggressive plant that spread through rhizomes under the ground. If it is not controlled, it can be invaded, crop fill, and become a weed. Now let's see where is its origin. Napier grass is native of Rhodesia in South Africa. The plant seems to have been used extensively as a fodder for the first time in Rhodesia. Napier grass was named in honor of Colonel Napier, who urged the Rhodesian Department of Agriculture in 1909 to explore the possibility of using it for commercial livestock production. Next, we will discuss about geographic distribution. Napier grass is widely distributed in tropical and subtropical regions of Asia, Africa, Southern Europe, and America. It was introduced to India in the year 1912 from South Africa. In India, it is grown mainly in Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Gujarat, West Bengal, and Assam. Next, let's see what are its economic importance. Livestock as well as dairy farming is vital for the livelihood and for food security of millions of people. Livestock farming is equally profitable or sometimes more profitable than agriculture, but Without agriculture, it will be impossible. So, intercropping of agriculture and livestock farming is one of the good options. With growing population and shrinking in areas for pasture, cattle are increasingly fed on crop residues, cultivated fodders, and concentrates. To purchase all the feeding material is unprofitable. To be more profitable, we should be able to produce feeding materials on our own. Among various fodders, Napier grass has become by far the most promising and high-yielding fodder, giving dry matter yields that surpass most tropical grasses. Now, we will discuss about the botanical description of the grass. Napier can grow vigorously up to a height of about 150 to 200 centimeters. The plant tillers profusely and produce thick clump of 20 to 30 stalk. That is why it is called elephant grass. It resembles sugarcane in growth habit, but 
lips are narrower and stem are taller. The lower part of the stem is usually smooth, but the portion near the top is usually hairy. The lips are dull green and very long, growing to about 90 centimeters. The lip seed claps the stem and is generally smooth and sometimes hairy. The lips margin are sharply toothed. The inflorescence is an erect cylindrical spike, light yellow in color and about 15 to 25 centimeter long. Spikelets are 4 to 6 mm long and surrounded by 2 cm long plumose bristle of varying length. There is little or no seed formation. If seeds are formed, the seldom develop to maturity. Next, we will discuss about the soil requirement. Napier grass grow well on a variety of soils. Light loam and sandy loam soil with good moisture retention capacity are preferred to heavy soils. Fertile loam soil with good drainage, rich in organic matter and nutrient element is best suited for its optimum growth. The grass does not thrive well on waterlogged and flood prone land. Therefore, soils should be kept moist at the root zone, but there should not be water stagnation. It can withstand saline condition to some extent. It established well at a pH range of 5 to 8. Next, we will discuss about climatic requirement. Napier grass can grow both under tropical as well as subtropical regions, but it grows best under warm tropics. The optimum temperature is about 31 degrees Celsius. It ceases to grow when temperature falls below 10 degrees Celsius. Light showers alternated with bright sunshine are very congenial to the crop. Total water requirement of the grass is estimated to about 800 to 1000 millimeters. It can tolerate a moderate drought for short spells because of its deep growth system. Tall varieties are very susceptible to frost in contrast to the dwarf varieties which are frost tolerant. Even if the herbaceous part are killed by frost, the underground part remain alive as long as the soil is not frozen. Next, let us know together about the popular varieties. Pusa Jain NB21, CO3, and CO4 are promising varieties. Besides above four commonly grown varieties, there are some other promising varieties like Pusa Napier 1, Pusa Napier 2, Gajras, NB393, CO1, CO2, PBN83, Yes1, IZFRI3, IZFRI6, IZFRI7, IZFRI10, and KKM1. Next, we will see about how land preparation should be done. The land should be prepared well and should be free from 
width. Length should first be plow using small board plow followed by two harrowing. Planking should be done to obtain a firm and well leveled seed bed. Bezel application of farm yard manure is done before the preparation of rizes or furrows. Rizes are to be made across the slope as far as possible at a spacing of 60 cm with a height of about 25 cm which enables uniform and easy irrigation. Next, we will see what is the optimum planting time. For Karib season, planting is done normally in the month of July with the onset of monsoon. Besides the Karib season planting, Napier planting may also be done at the end of February and March. Next, we will see what planting materials can be used for propagation of the grass. The grass does not produce viable seeds, hence it is propagated by vegetative means. Stem cuttings Stem pieces having two or three knots with potent buds are to be made. One knot should be covered with soil for sprouting of roots. The raised one or two being exposed above the ground level for sprouting of shoots. Next planting material is root cuttings. Root slips or splits with the upper green leaf separated and having both roots and shoots are used. Seedling from the slips established more quickly than those grown from stem cuttings. Next is planting method. Planting may be done either in furrows or ridges. In case of furrows, planting should be done about 15 cm deep and covered with about 7.5 cm of soil initially, gradually filling as the plant grows. The cuttings are planted at a slanting position at 30 or 40 degrees. In case of stem cuttings, the bud should face off and should not be damaged. When rootstock are used, the separated root slips are planted to a depth of 25 to 30 centimeters in the soil. While planting, the soil around the cutting has to be pressed tightly for good root growth. Next is about the optimum seed rate, spacing and planting depth. About 27,800 root slips or stem cuttings are needed for planting 1 hectare of land. Planting is done at a spacing of 90 cm by 60 cm with a planting depth of 25 to 30 cm in the soil. Now, we will see how much manures and fertilizer should be needed. Napier is quick growing, heavy feeder crop. So, application of NPK at regular interval is necessary. 15 to 20 tons per hectare of farm yard manure or compost are to be applied during land preparation, preferably one month ahead of planting. Phosphorus and potash according to soil test value in deficient soil is to be applied at the time of planting. If soil test values are not available, blanket recommendation of 150, 50, 40 and PK may be done. 75 kg of nitrogen and full dose of phosphorus and potash should be applied as basal. Tom dressing of nitrogenous fertilizer at the rate of 75 kg per hectare should be done 
after 30 days of planting. 75 kg nitrogen per hectare after each cut should be applied. Coming up next is about the cropping system. Napier is generally grown and managed as a pure stain crop. However, they can be grown in mixture with legumes. They can grow as an intercrop within the same row or within alternate rows with cowpea during Kharif and Versim or Lucerne during Rabi season. NB21 and Pusa giant varieties are better for intercropping. With the start of winter, the growth of Napier grass is checked due to low temperature, hence Bersim or Lucerne may be planted to get forest during this period. The stumps of Napier become old and the tillering capacity diminished considerably after 4 to 5 years, hence fresh planting is taken off after 4 to 5 years. Napier grass can also be grown as an LA crop with forer legumes such as Leucana, Ciliandra, Sisbania, and Clericidia. Next, we will discuss about water management. The first irrigation is done immediately after planting and the next on the third day of planting. Subsequent irrigation is generally provided at weekly or about 2 to 3 weeks interval depending on soil moisture status. After the crop has established completely, irrigation at intervals of a fortnight or so is sufficient. During rainy seasons, after heavy and continuous rain, excess water should be drained out. Total water requirement of the grass is 800 to 1000 mm. Next, we will discuss about weed management. The field should be weeded as early as possible after planting and kept weed free all throughout the growing season, especially during the initial stage while the grass is getting established. Two to three weeding are required to control the weeds. Weeding may be done either with hand hoe or wheel hoe. Next, we will discuss about insect and disease management. Generally, plant protection is not required as the crop is less attacked by pests and diseases. However, the crop may sometimes be attacked by insects like grasshopper and stem borers. This can be controlled by spraying endosulfan 35 EC at the rate of 1.5 liters in 1,000 liters of water per hectare. Two sprays are enough to control this pace. Spraying should be done at least 30 days before cutting up fodder. The crop may also be infested with diseases like head smut, napier stunting disease, snow mole fungal disease. Such diseases can be managed by using disease-resistant varieties, clean planting materials, and uprooting and burning the affected materials. Next, we will see about harvesting. The first cut can be done 3 to 4 months after planting, that is 8, 1 to 1.2 meters height. Subsequent cutting can be taken every 45 to 50 days. If well managed, it can be harvested every month in hot and wet environments. During winter months of November to January, when growth is rather slow, the interval of cutting should be extended. While cutting the grass, it is desirable to leave a stubble height of at least 10 to 15 cm from the ground level 
so as to avoid damage to the young growing buds near the base of the plant. The crop should not be allowed to completely mature as the cattle will not release the fodder and at the same time its nutritive value falls drastically. Next is about the yield. In general, Napier grass yield about 1,200 to 1,500 quintals of green fodder on annual basis. However, in some varieties like CO3 and CO4, an average yield of up to 2,700 quintals per hectare on annual basis has been reported. Now coming to the conclusion, as high quality food is required for human being, high quality fodder is a must for the cattle too. So introduction of high quality Napier variety is worth mentioning for enhancing the crop production. Over and above this, adoption of proper agronomic practices starting from site selection land preparation till harvesting and storage should always be kept into consideration.